Good morning, everyone. We'll go ahead and get started here shortly. We'll just give a few more moments for people to join. I did just see a couple numbers pop up here, so we'll just give some time and then we'll get started with staff certification. All right, good morning everyone. Looks like we're holding pretty steady. We'll go ahead and get started here. If you do have questions throughout the webinar, there is a Q&A bubble up at the top in the right hand corner. If you would like to type in there to ask any questions along the way, please feel free um, and we'll try to get to them as we go. Today we're going to be going through the staff certification report and how to find that report and how to get it certified. Next week begins our office hours webinars. So those are registration required webinars. Registration is available on the webinars and presentations, or sorry, just the webinars tile of the Help Desk website. So feel free to take a look there and get yourself registered if you're interested in any of these following topics. Um, error logs and data uh, dictionaries will be next week. Then we have staff resources on the 17th, data security on the 24th, and accuracy and validity on the, 20, on the 31st. So feel free to join us for those. They'll be a little more interactive with that uh, registration required link. So please feel free to join us and ask any questions you may have. For today's report on staff certification, there are many resources on multiple different tiles, one of them being EPS guides. You can find the EPS reporting due dates and also the staff uh, positions that qualify for EPS. Then you also have the data reporting instructions tile, which has the October 1st student enrollment. That should be a staff count, but there are directions on that page to get to the staff directions, uh, staff um, report. And then we also have the staff data entry guides, and that's your NEO staff user guide. That's going to also have your staff appendices for adding staff um, for positions and things like that. So feel free to take a look at those if you need any assistance. Staff certification is used for EPS reporting. Um, it is important to thoroughly review all staff counts for accuracy. Um, so prior to superintendent certification, all current staff have to have an active staff assignment in NEO staff, so they'll need to be updated. Everyone was moved at the beginning of the uh, year on 7-1. They were rolled over to pending status. Those will all have to be moved to active in order to count on your reports. So if you're seeing zero counts, then you need to make sure that those are updated to active before the 30th of this year, of the, this month. Uh, the staff certification will not be accepted if certification contains any pending records. So once again, everyone needs to be updated and districts with a without a librarian or a nurse can have their superintendent selected as, as those in the district roles. All LEAs with publicly funded students are required to report. When entering staff members into NEO staff, you'll need to have staff access. So if you do not have staff access and you've been asked to enter staff for NEO, you will need to have an access request submitted by your superintendent uh, with staff access requested for you. Um, and you'll have to have an active staff assignment in NEO staff before we can get you um, set up with an account. So we can go through your access request process and we'll get that set up for you. In NEO, you can select staff, and once you're in staff, you have the manage staff section. In order to add staff, this is where you would have to be, and you have staff search, which is going to be for any returning, uh, any new staff 
who are coming to your district for the first time, you can find them in using the staff search. And then you also have adding a new, uh, returning staff members, which is your SAU search. So you can find them and at, update their uh, positions from last year to any changes that need to take place for this year. In staff search, you would just search for the person's name, first name, last name, date of birth, and then you would come up with a list of people who qualify with that name in the state. So they are going to be listed below. You can select their information and then you can get them set up with a um, position in your district. If you are not able to find your staff members, then you can add a new staff member. So if they've never taught in a main school, they're not going to come up. So you can select them from, uh, you can add them through the add new staff. If they have taught in Maine before, then they are going to be in the um, system and you can select edit in order to get them put into your school district. For returning staff members, you have your SAU staff, and so this is going to be selecting your district. You should see the staff members in your district listed below um, in the staff. Uh, SAU search, SAU staff. If you see anyone that is indicated as in progress, then it's not submitted and needs to be updated. So you will need to make sure that you are updating anyone that is still listed as in progress. In order to update them, you will need to select staff, the staff ID number to get into their staff, uh, their positions and update those. Once you're in Neo staff, you can add positions, however many positions that a person have is how many should be listed here. Uh, each one is going to look slightly different from one another, depending on who you're entering. Um, so you do have um, this screen that comes up to add a new staff member, but it will change as you add information here. In order to update a person who is previously in your district, you'll need to come up to that line and select edit uh, in order to update their status to active. So if you're add, if you're updating a status from last year, updating a position from last year, you'll need to select from the top here in order to get them updated. If they have a new additional position, then you can add assignment down below. Um, oh, I just want to chime in real quick. Just make sure you guys are hitting the submit button at the very bottom there when you go to finish uh, locking them in. Um, if you hit save as pending, um, that's going to be one of those pending assignments uh, Ali was referring to that's going to uh, prevent you from certifying your staff. So make sure you're submitting and not saving as pending. Uh, we've seen a few districts do that uh, this year where they're, all their staff are now pending uh, rather than submitted, and they kind of got to go in and click the button again. So heads up. Um, if you're getting a notice about your main schools, you have a notice that comes up that there's no uh, currently no updated grade span in main schools. That is likely because your main schools has not been approved. So if you're having any issues with that, please uh, make sure that main schools is all taken care of and in an approved status. Um, so that is another module to keep in mind as you are working through staff. If you're having issues with that, please reach out to your superintendent to get it updated. Um, so update your fields from top to bottom. Um, so you'll want to make sure that you start at the top, add your people. Um, years of experience does increment one year automatically, um, so you don't need to worry about that. And make sure that you are updating contact information and using staff um, staff emails, work emails, SAU emails, um, not personal phone numbers and email addresses. We have had a couple people that we've reached out to and contacted, and we contacted them on their personal cell phone, and they were not very happy with us about that. So please make yeah. sure that it is their professional email address or and phone number um, that is added here. Uh, and this is also going to be really important for anyone who's in a district role to ensure that we have accurate contact information when trying to reach out to superintendents or reaching out to special data specialists um, or uh, any program areas on those district roles. Yep, and uh, and because these this contact info, this also goes public. 
So in the Neo contact search, um, this is the information where if somebody, you know, a parent wants to say, hey, who are the fifth grade teachers at this district? Um, if they want to do that search, they can. And then these uh, emails and phone numbers are what's going to come up for that parent in that search. So yeah, make sure you're just using work work related things. And uh, also, you know, don't put in, if you're the staff data entry person, don't put in your email and phone number for every assignment. Uh, we've also seen that this year. Um, and once again, when, unless you want your name coming up as every single position in the district, um, don't do that. And then once again, the in, uh, save button will put someone in progress. Um, whereas if you hit the submit button, it will move the person to active. Oh, yeah, so um, please, uh, please keep that in mind that the two buttons do have different things um, in it. So if you submit, they're going to be moved into that active status. It will be on your EPS reports. Um, whereas if you save, they're not going to be coming up on your, in your report. All right, let's go into locating the staff certification report. This is the same access um, as having up, as updating staff. You'll need to have staff access to get into the certification report. In the certification uh, in staff, you'll have to select certification and you can select certification report from that drop down. It will then bring you to this screen where you have a list of all of the positions in the district. It's a rather long, lofty list. Um, but it will go through the counts of staff, number of staff that are in a position um, and you can see uh, any details about who is in those positions by clicking the view positions um, on the navigation side. So you can identify who is being counted in those positions um, by selecting view positions. And then at the bottom you have your uh, EPS staff. So these are going to, this section is going to give you your EPS counts uh, for aggregate counts of any positions that count for EPS funding. And you also have your district roles. So in order to certify, you have to have, um, you have to have each of these filled out for your district. So you have to have someone selected for each position in order to um, get this uh, certified. So once you save all your designates here, um, you'll want to make sure these are the ones where your contact information is also very important to make sure that we have the correct contact information because a lot of the teams do use this data to reach out. So please make sure that it is up to date um, and accurate and updated for any uh, new people who may be coming in. Um, And once again, all roles must have an assigned assigned designee in order to certify. Before superintendents can certify this report, you will have this checklist at the bottom of things that need to be done. This um, will go through all of the things that need to happen, but uh, it does indicate that the special education director needs to certify the EFS 05 part two in, Neo, in the NEO special education module. Um, so that is something that your special education director needs to handle. Uh, we did do a webinar last week about um, the EFS 05 part two and ensuring that they know that they can update that and need to certify that before superintendents. But just so that everyone is aware, it will not be certifiable until you have that EFS 05 approach. Um, and then all staff positions need to be in an active state in order to certify. So if you have any that are in progress or pending, you're not going to be able to certify this report. Uh, all district roles have to have a designee and they need to be saved so that you can um, certify the report. And um, you need to make sure that you've reviewed your staff details report. Um, and anything that is flagged as needs review will need to be updated before you can certify. Yeah. And, um, and that one usually can hang folks up because it's not super obvious where those are. But once you go, I don't know if you're going to get into it, Allie, or OK. I'll give you guys a brief explanation. It's when you go into staff and you have those different options up top for staff cert certification. There's another one for uh, reports and the ones that it's referring to. Um, yep, so the reports up there, if you go into that, there are two reports in there. 
There's a two staff details reports. One of them is for courses. The other one is for FTE. And that's what it's referring to. So if you if you checked all the other boxes and you're like, why can't I certify? Man, I don't I don't know what's going on. Go check those two reports. And when you load them, scroll over to the far right column and there's a needs review over there. And you can actually filter that and just kind of you know sort it to bring the anybody with a value in that box to the top. Um, and basically what that means is it's on their staff assignment. If there is um, it's usually the special education questions. So if you set a special education teacher, you get a couple extra boxes that show up and um, you just need to kind of check those off. It's where it asks, you know, what percentage of the time um, are they working with special education kids? It's usually basically that um, I've never really seen anything other than that to be the hang up. So that, that's kind of what it's referring to, and it's not often uh, checked, but you know, as long as, if all your staff are active and submitted, usually not a problem it's usually just going to happen with folks that have rolled over maybe um and that wasn't updated so i just wanted to touch on that a little bit and so yes so you do have this checklist that will pop up um, and make sure that you're taking a look in those different modules uh, contacting your special education director if you see that you need to have your efso 5 part 2 report uh, certified and then if you make sure you're contacting whoever needs to update any staff assignments um, that those are all updated. So just communication in the district is really important and making sure that these all get taken care of. Um, so make sure that you're reaching out to those people within your district. A few quick notes before we finish up here. Um, so once again, EFSO 5 Part 2 needs to be certified by special education director before the staff certification report can be certified by the superintendent. And all district rules must be assigned in order to certify the report. So we, those are the ones we see quite a bit. And then also the, um, the details report and making sure that you've reviewed everything that needs to be reviewed from those. If you have any questions as you are doing any of this reporting, um, please make sure that you reach out to the help desk. Um, this report is due on the 30th. I don't know that we mentioned that, but it is due the 30th this year. So please make sure that all of the staff assignments are in by October 30. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the help desk at 207-624-6896 or email medems.helpdesk at me.gov. If you would like any assistance with adding um, staff members into NEO staff or are you having some difficulty, please feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to help you uh, navigate adding staff members. Uh, my number is 207-446-3897 or you can email me at alexandra.cookson at main.gov. And with that, we will leave it. And please feel free to reach out in the um, Q&A. We'll just leave a few moments for that opportunity. Yep. And um, yeah, while we kind of just wait for some questions to roll in, um, I'll just kind of talk a little bit on some usual questions folks have regarding staff. Because um, a, a big one is just around contractors and, you know, if you guys need to enter them into NEO staff and kind of the kind of the short answer is yes. Um, if they're working with students or if they are any kind of a teacher or if they're a bus driver, um, those people do all need to be entered in the staff um, because we're using the one of the main functions of staff is to make sure that they have appropriate background checks on file. So there's no real getting around that if, if they're in your schools as a regular, you know, regular staff person, uh, they've got to be in there. Um, the people that don't need to be in are folks that are like, if you have a leak in your bathroom and you call in a plumber for the day to come fix that, don't put them in. They're not regular school staff, so they don't need to be in. But um, any other regular contracted staff do, um, just as kind of a, a general rule. Um, that includes like pre-K, like if you contract for your pre-K, um, yeah, they need to go in under your school, under grade pre-K um, and get them reported in there. Um, that just kind of always comes up a lot. Um, the other, another big question folks will often ask is when you actually get to your staff certification report and you're looking at that grid uh, that Allie was showing earlier, you know, it's got all of the different numbers on it with the 
FTEs, and then there's a column for the EPS FTE. Um, so those can be different, and they probably will be. Um, folks that are paid with federal funds are not going to be counted into your EPS FTE, uh, but they'll still be part of your regular staff. Because um, once again, the EPS is what we're trying to determine uh, how much funding um, you guys need to get from us. So if you if you have a bunch of folks that are essentially paid for free by the feds already, uh, we don't really count them for what we're going to be calculating. Um, so just be aware of that difference. Um, and not every staff is an EPS position. Um, so we've got in that. Um, staff data entry guides tile. There's, I think Ali mentioned it. There's the EPS guides um, there to show who is EPS and who counts for what we're doing here. Um, it's a handful of positions, but like um, your business managers and uh, program directors, um, those folks are not EPS positions, uh, but your admin assistants, classroom teachers, principals, those folks are. So just kind of being familiar. Um, and how those counts are kind of pulled together will help you. So don't freak out when you see a bunch of uh, people that are you know, not EPS. Did have a question come in um, about putting a bus monitor in um, and what position is available for those people? Yep, um, if they're just kind of hanging out on the buses, um, you can put them in and we actually have one called student monitor. Um, and that's exactly what that's for. You know, folks, if they're just sitting in in cafeterias or on buses or uh, patrolling the halls, that type of thing, uh, student monitor. That's how you would uh, put them in as. I also had another question about if this will be recorded and yes, we will have it recorded. It's hopefully post our data um, website, our data team YouTube playlist, uh, and that is available on the uh, webinars tile of the help desk website. Uh, there's a link at the top that goes to the DOE YouTube channel and it will take you right to our uh, webinar from today. Next. All right, it looks like we do not have any more questions coming in. Once again, if you have any questions after we close out today, please feel free to send us an email or give us a call. Um, and thank you for joining us. Hopefully you can join us next week um, or any of the following weeks for any of our office hours. So please make sure that you register for those so you can get the link to join us for those webinars. That being said, I hope everyone has a great rest of their day and we look forward to seeing you in the future. Thanks again, everybody. Talk to you later.